Located right on Route 100 in Waterbury Center, Vermont, the Big Red Barn Building is hard to miss. I'd seen it go up and open over the last couple of years, but I had missed what a coffee colossus is percolating inside. It's really interesting because there are four different entities here all having to do with coffee. Holly Alves' husband, Manet, began the company and built a career in coffee. I joke and say that Manet, my husband, is a coffee printer because he's an entrepreneur with coffee. Indeed, under one roof, there's testing and quality assurance for other companies, a roastery for their own coffee's wholesale market, a retail cafe of their own, and a coffee school. No wonder they need a big barn. But this place is only here because in 2011, infamous tropical storm Irene displaced the old place down the road. There was three and a half feet of water everywhere. Our roasters were underwater. We took probably three to five years to get back. And because of that and being on a floodplain, we didn't want to risk that again. So they rebuilt here on 100 between Waterbury and Stowe. Serving their own coffee in their own cafe is a first, but it was the coffee school that really intrigued me here. Who are your students? Really anybody from expert to complete beginner. Uh, we start at square zero um, and work through a really comprehensive training program. I couldn't even hack intro to coffee. We're gonna start with 52 grams of ground coffee. We're gonna use 700 milliliters of water. So is there gonna be a lot of math involved? The tasting part was good, if still a bit beyond me. Here we really need to uh, spray this coffee on our retronasal so that we get the full effect. On our what? Uh, we just need to be able to smell and taste at the same Did time. Did you say retronasals? Yeah, yes. All right, so I'm a coffee school dropout, but I do have a diploma in finding great new places to have a cup of coffee. Just a bit south in Waterbury itself, we were drawn to a massive mural, a stunning work of public art. It's the creation of Vermont muralist Sara Lee Tarrat, who worked from a 40-foot cherry picker to paint it. It took two years to research, then it took seven weeks on site, full time, mm -hmm. to finish. Tarrat's works can be moving, literally, as in the case of the Ben & Jerry's bus, and emotionally, perhaps none more so than her creation at the state office complex in Waterbury. The general feel of it is a forest and then the close-up personal part is so many stories. I call it a story quilt. The stories are based on what used to be here, the Vermont State Hospital, a mental asylum which operated for more than 100 years until 2011. This town really hosted the hospital in a way, I would call it a gracious way for a century and a half. Is that part of what you tried to express yeah. here? Yeah, it's a complicated story and it's many stories. Enough stories to rat hopes to interest even casual observers for years to come. I am aware that there are people who will see that piece every day. What I wanted to create is something that people wouldn't learn to ignore. For its sheer size alone, that seems unlikely. There are some things in Vermont that you have to be off the interstate to enjoy. This Vermont icon has to be enjoyed between spring and early fall, so there was no time to waste on this visit. Ever had an authentic Vermont creamy? In Vermont, people are very particular about their creamies, very. They will drive by four other creamy stands to go to the one they like. I chose Palmer Maple Lane in Jericho, Vermont, after all. Why not combine two Vermont icons in one? So I like to say we're a maple farm that dabbles in ice cream. Having been in the wholesale maple biz, Paul and Colleen Palmer opened their retail store six years ago. It was clear right away people wanted more than just maple syrup. And within the first 30 days, we had 40 to 50 people ask us if we were doing maple creamies. And that was never part of the business plan. Awesome, thank you. It's in the business plan now. Now, if you're a non-Vermonter thinking, this stuff looks a lot like soft serve, you're right. But in the Green Mountains, it's a creamy. And real creamy lovers insist on maple. It's got to be a maple creamy. Because otherwise it's just soft serve. No, it's just soft serve, but here in Vermont it's a maple creamy and it's, they're wonderful. Last year, Paul and Colleen added a creamy truck to take to events and weddings where clearly some Vermont brides have their Vermont priorities in order. There was brides that said, there was two things I wanted to accomplish today. What was I? One was getting the creamy and two, two was, was getting, getting married. married. In that order. I went full maple. Maple creamy with maple sprinkles. Well, It'll be next spring now before Vermont creamy worship begins anew, and I do use the word worship advisedly.
In Vermont, a maple creamy is religion. We don't have an answer for that. It's just, it is what it is, and we're just glad people like it. Mm -hmm.